Imagine you got an allowance for doing your tours as an adult. How great would that be, right? Hi, I'm Daniel Stromberg. Um, I got my Bachelor's of Fine Arts in Studio Art from UNM. Um, I was a high school art teacher for a couple of years during the pandemic. Right now, I'm an exhibit developer at Explora, um, and I wanted to take this class. To I had some coding skills, some electronic skills that I wanted to like push those farther and get you know actually like pretty good at. Um, and I'm struggling to keep my house clean, as I'm sure <laughs> many of us are. Um, so my proposed solution is what I like to call vacuum ATM, pay yourself to do your chores. Um, <laughs> I got this render I made for it right here. Um, so kind of my motivation uh, was a, ma a lack of motivation. Um, my partner and I have trouble keeping our house clean. Um, she has ADHD and I just have general motivation issues. And you know, things like just do it don't really work. <laughs> um, so I wanted a fun, rewarding way to do chores uh, instead of relying on shame or guilt. So what I decided to do was make a machine to help provide me with that motivation. And so the plan was to use uh, strategies that are typically really helpful for neuro neurodivergent people. Um, and so things like picking a specific task. So for this was just, just gonna focus on vacuuming. Um, setting a time limit. So hopefully we can do like a short amount of vacuuming more frequently instead of like doing, you know, two hours of cleaning every two months or something. Um, and then providing extrinsic rewards, which I've read like it's very helpful for people with ADHD and randomize the rewards. So it's like gambling, but then you have the clean house at the end. <laughs> and of course, like making it fun was uh, like talking with my wife. Well, that was a huge part of it, it was just to make it fun. Um, for my design considerations, I wanted, I didn't want to have a screen on there. Um, I wanted it to fit into my life easily. I wanted to pay me to do chores, either with money or, you know, some kind of reward candy or something. Um, I didn't want to disassemble old projects. So some of our old projects had sensors we that I wanted to use, but I didn't want to take them apart. And of course, I wanted to look and feel good. I mean, you know, after all, I got my uh, bachelor's of fine arts, so you know, it's got to be important. <laughs> These are the components I used. Um, uh, we've got a dust sensor, which is on my uh, the midterm project, my plant an LED ring, the Photon 2, some uh, micro switches, um, servo. I bought a toy capsule vending machine um, and about 200 plastic capsules, <laughs> <laughs> which doesn't go as far as you think. <laughs> um, so for designing it, um, at first, you know, I drew up like what I wanted to do, the enclosure to kind of be like to sit around the vending machine. Then I modeled the vending machine itself so I would know like how everything fit together. I designed the enclosure um, and then finally like designing mechanical pieces that would need to go inside the vending machine to make things work. Those are all the blue pieces in this picture. Um, for controlling the rewards, right? Like you can't just crank it and get a reward every time. What it, uh, I ended up with, um, again, like lots of discussions with my wife and she is kind of the brains really. Um, but we talked about what would work and I ended up on this kind of door which covered up the hole inside and you, it like moves out of the way and then closes um, to stop the capsules or allow them to fall through. The benefit of this is the machine looks totally the same and you can still crank the crank on the front, which was kind of part of what I wanted is to have that um, input. So for sensing user input, you know, I mentioned I wanted this to fit into my life. I didn't want to have screens or buttons as, as much as possible. So um, on the back side of the crank, I printed a mount for a switch 
micro switch with a little wheel and lever and a cam, which would engage the switch at this, at, you know, whenever I wanted it to, but depending on the cam design. Um, and then I uh, cut into my wall mounted vacuum to add a switch in there. Mm -hmm. um, for fabrication, I did a good amount of 3D printing. I was adding them to my project and I was like, how many of these do I have? Um, I've got the door here to cover up the capsules. I've got a mount for the servo inside the container. I've got um, a display that I printed that lights up in the back. And then I printed a case um, for this photon and breadboard. Um, and there's a couple others you probably will see. Um, I did uh, CNC routing to make the enclosure. Um, so with my 3D design, I exported the panels um, into DXFs, and then I brought them into VCarve and made tool paths, cut it out, and then I did a dry fit to make sure it was going to work out together. Um, I did a little bit of laser cutting, mostly just as a diffuser for the LED lights. Um, so I made this little gauge here, um, and I, I cut it this out. I didn't end up using it uh, for the display. For the wiring, um, I have two different photons. I'll talk about that in a second, but this one is the wiring for the dispenser itself, which gives you the, the reward. And this is the wiring for uh, what senses if the vacuum's on the wall. Um, I made my, or I designed my PCB in KiCad. I didn't get it made or anything, but that would be cool to do. Um, so I have the 3D rendering of it here and kind of the layout of the wiring and everything. Um, for the code and the logic, this is kind of like a, you know, 10,000 foot overview of the logic of how this works. So I have three things in my house. And this is so right here is the smart plant, which we made for our midterm, and it has a dust sensor on it that collects the dust uh, data and it sends the data to Adafruit. Um, on the wall next to my vacuum is a uh, photon, which just all it does is detects if the vacuum is on the wall charging or not, and it sends that to Adafruit. Then this is what I'm calling the vacuum ATM itself. And that receives that information and it you know tells you if it's time to vacuum. When you vacuum for long enough, it allows you to get a treat out of there. Um, and it sends uh, the dust holes to data fruit as well.
So that's my video. That's how it works, kind of. Um, here's my Adafruit dashboard. So you can see it tells you when the vacuum is charging or not. This is the dust level accumulated over time. This is um, multiplied by a thousand. So this is 800,000 dust particles. You know, it's kind of disturbing to see. <laughs> um, this is just the raw, the dust levels coming in from the plant. And then this is, again, just the accumulated dust levels. And you can see when you vacuum, it drops down and it resets to zero. Some of the challenges I had were, the first one was how to dispense the rewards. Um, this, I like knew this was gonna be a problem. Um, again, my wife, we were talking about like, how do we do it? She mentioned we could print coins that fit in there and it'd be relatively easy to dispense the coins. So I tested that out. I made a little mock-up of it um, and it did work, it worked great. The only problem is like, if you have 50 cents, you could put it in and crank it and get your reward still. Mm -hmm. um, we uh, we you know thought about it some more and came up with the door. Um, and then how, how to detect the user input. Again, I landed on that cam switch uh, set up. At first I, I was using a, um, Hall effect sensor and a magnet glued to the uh, rotating shaft. And it was working uh, pretty well. It wasn't, I was having trouble getting to be super, super consistent. And so that's why I opted for the uh, micro switch. Um, and then finally, the, um, the other problem I had was like, originally I was gonna put it right here. This is a rendering I made for this, um, we're just gonna put it right here because it had to be close to the vacuum to have the wire go to the vacuum and sense the switch. Mm -hmm. um, this placement didn't really work for us. Like it didn't seem like a good spot. And so that's what inspired me to do two separate um, photons, one sensing the vacuum and the other one actually dispensing. Um, and so what I've learned through this project, um, one thing was saving to EEPROM to keep the data across resets and shutdown. So the, the dust data would go up and when I would reset it or turn it off, it would just reset back to zero. So I wanted to make sure to be able to save that dust data. Um, adding joints to 3D to uh, my design and animating them, um, as you saw, I, I was dipping my toes in the water of hit branching um, to try to like, uh, when I decided to split it into two different photons, um, I wanted to test out get branching and you know, kind of learn something there. Um, I, and combining multiple photons into one working system uh, and then working with classes uh, and methods, which I'm, I wanna learn more uh, basically when the cam switch was pressed or the, in our button library, we already had like, is the button pressed or is it clicked? And what I needed was, is it released? So I had to write um, some code for that. Um, and then cloud compiling and cloud flashing has been really helpful. You know, when everything's all put together, um, it's been really nice to just flash it from the computer, even though I can't plug it in. Um, going forward with this project, I'd like to add an on-off switch. Um, I'd also like to add a light sensor so I can adjust the level, the brightness level of the LEDs. Um, a motion sensor would be kind of nice so that the LEDs only light up when I'm around. And then one thing I wanted to do initially was uh, have a way to track multiple users. Um, so like, you know, what I could do is vacuum and I get a point. And then my wife back and she gets a point and they have like a little competition. <laughs> and we could put that on the after dashboard. Um, and then the other thing is what I initially planned for the uh, LED ring was to have it be kind of like a loading bar. So as it got dirtier, it would fill up. And then when it was, you know, then when there was so much dust accumulated, it would turn red or blink. Right now it's just a solid color. Um, thank you guys so much. Uh, thanks to Dr. Brian, uh, EJ, Reed. Thanks to Explora for letting me come here and take this class for so long. And thanks to all of you, my great classmates. Uh,
It's been great. I'll miss you.